This podcast is part of a series from the Research on Standards and GCSEs in Wales project. The standards are set by the exam board, WJEC. How standards are set really matters for the fairness of the results. This podcast is a conversation about the kinds of questions teachers asked about norm referencing. I've heard people say that GCSEs are norm reference in Wales but a certain percentage of pupils are given each grade. This means that outcomes in Wales can ever change, even if performance improves. Is it true that grades are statistically driven? In qualification systems around the world, there are different ways um, in which the grade boundaries can be set. Some methods rely on just statistics, and some rely on experts' judgments of how well students have performed Most, though, use a combination of expert views of the quality of students' work and statistical information to set grade boundaries, and that's what happens in Wales. Who are the experts who look at the quality of the student work? How can we trust their judgement? They're the examiners who have written the exam papers and the coursework tasks. They're usually teachers with lots of experience, so they understand how students are likely to respond to the questions. Together, they form an award and committee made up of a chair of examiners responsible for the qualification overall, um, the head examiners who are called principal examiners for each exam paper, and the principal moderator who is responsible for the coursework, and there'll also be an officer from the exam board The examiners are given examples of students' work on last year's grade boundary marks. This reminds them of the standard of performance needed to get the grade in the previous year. They're also given this year's students' work over a range of marks. And that range of marks is chosen by using statistical information and recommendations from the examiners. The committee looks to see which of these marks best matches the performance on the grade boundary last year. That doesn't sound easy because the exam questions are different each year and across a paper there are lots of ways a student can get an overall mark. You're right and it's a big responsibility. To help the examiners, the principal examiner for each question paper will show how the students have performed on key questions, questions that differentiate between particular grades. The committee looks carefully at performance on questions that are similar across the years. The principal moderator also reports on how the coursework has been delivered in schools and in the quality of the moderation that year. Each examiner forms their own independent view of the quality of the student's work. Then the examiner's judgments about where the grade boundary should be is displayed on what's known as a tick chart. This tick chart is for a grade C in GCSE biology. The examiners have looked at two or three pieces of student work across a range of five marks. And if they think the mark's worthy of the grade, um, then they give a tick for it. If they think it's not worthy, they give a cross. And if they're really unsure, they record a question mark. It's a sea of ticks and crosses. How do they make sense of it all? Yeah, there's often a difference of opinion about which mark ought to be the grade boundary. The range of possible marks is called the zone of uncertainty. Within that range, the committee look for the mark where there are more ticks than crosses. A boundary of 49? Maybe, but 40 or 50 could also be the right boundary. So they also look at the statistical information to see what grade boundary it suggests. What kind of statistical information is used? One of the key pieces of statistical information is the results for schools and colleges that have entered students for the GCSE in the previous year as well as in the current year. These are called common centres because they're common to the two years. If it's debatable which of the marks in the zone of uncertainty is the best grade boundary, then it makes sense to choose the mark that keeps results for the common centres overall as steady as possible. So the examiner's views about the quality of the work are combined with the statistics. Both are considered. 
Yeah, and the weight that's put on each can change depending on the circumstances. So sometimes the statistical information is weaker. So if there are only a few common centres or the overall number of students entered for the GCSE is low, or if it's changed substantially from the previous year, then that would represent weaker statistical information. Then again, sometimes examiners' judgments of the quality of work is weaker. For example, where a qualification is new and different to anything that's gone before. What if the awarding committee pick grade boundaries that lead to big changes in outcomes? The quality assurance of grading doesn't stop with the awarding committee. To ensure consistency across these committees, staff within the exam board WJEC look at the proposed grade boundaries and satisfy themselves that there's good evidence to support them. And then Qualifications Wales, the exams regulator, also scrutinises all of the GCSE awards. Of course, the evidence needed to support big changes in outcomes would need to be solid. It's certainly not as simple as given a set percentage of the pupils certain grades. Actually, you can see that the proportion of students achieving grades fluctuates over time when you look at the data. Here's an example. It's outcomes in GCSE biology. They went down a little in 2017 and 2018, and then they increased in 2019. They're not big changes. No, but we wouldn't really expect big changes year on year because teaching and learning doesn't radically change. This approach to setting grade boundaries used in Wales is called attainment referencing internationally. The students get grades that reflect their overall attainment at a standard that's comparable with the attainment needed to get that grade in previous years. I don't think I've heard of attainment referencing before. Yeah, it's the technical term for an approach to setting grade boundaries that's been used in Wales for many years. No approach to setting standards is without tension. In attainment referencing, many sources of information are used and the decision is certainly not formulaic. So there are questions about who decides what the standard should be, whether the right a level of credence was given to the statistics and whether the examiners got their judgments right in terms of the student's work and the difficulty of the question paper. If you'd like to find out more about setting standards in GCSE, you can look at our other resources on our website here.